a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, uh, like I said, my name's DJ, my name's Chrysco. Um, I'm predominantly I'm resident at the Warehouse Project in Manchester. I've been, I've been there for, since the beginning, so the last three and a half years. So you're loving that then. Amazing, amazing. I mean, we've done, I mean, we're in this third year at the um, uh, Piccadilly venue underneath Piccadilly train station. Tell us how that works exactly. Well, it's kind of, I mean, it really is a, park, it's a car park through the day. Um, and, you know, at the start of the weekend, cars have to, you know, cars have to be out by four o'clock on Friday, then all the teams start doing the loading um, on, I think they have like four hours to do it. So it's, it's a, a bit. It's a pretty hectic. It's an operation, yeah, yeah. Then it all gets packed away, you know, kind of in a, in a big arch in a corner and um, gets blanketed out for the for the cars through the week. It's like a complete, amazing, transformed, like, she just won, complete club, I mean, people, it? I mean, I bet there's businessmen who go in there, you know, every, every, you know, weekday through the week and, you know, couldn't even imagine yeah. what goes on but in there. there's artwork on the walls and everything. Yeah, it? it's kind of, I mean, it's just the way it's produced, it's the production, yeah. I think, Very and it's great. taken a, you know, it's taken a few years to get it right and then little touches and it's the, it's the lighting and, um, you know, the way the projectors are placed and it's like, you like I say, you know, you, you, we've learned through, you know, through mistakes and yeah. through, you know, just, just doing it in the venue for three years, we've really, I think this year has been the year. So, how would you describe your DJ style? Um, I mean, say it's quite varied. I mean, I've kind of, you know, I've, like I said, I've been at Warehouse for four yeah. years, nearly four years. Prior to that, I was playing, you know, every week in, week out, it's the old Sankey Soap yeah. for That's six years. Yeah. Well. So, you know, there was, you know, you kind of there as a warm up as a resident. So you play, you know, you play, I mean, I played before, you know, so many different varied names, you know, from Jeff Mills through to like, through to um, Dimitri from Paris. So, you know, that spectrum. Yeah. So, in, you know, I mean, really, I like, you know, I like the deep sound. It's house predominantly. Right. Um, obviously a lot of techno influences and stuff, but you know, it, it just depends who I'm playing with it. You can be, I can tailor what I'm playing to, who I'm warming up to basically, right, yeah. So yeah. What, what would you prefer to like actually play? I, I'm, I'm into Detroit, you know, right. Detroit, deep stuff. Fancy. I mean, yeah, I mean, kind, kind of, I mean, that, that I still have a lot of influence yeah. from that, from the days like David Carter, you know, the, the, the early. But you can go quite solely as well. Okay? Yeah, exactly. I've, I've, one thing, I mean, I've always, I mean, I think even when you play music, even when you play techno, I mean, te techno can have soul and the best techno does have soul. So, shake your no matter, music. exactly, yeah, no matter what it is, you know, it's got to have, it's got to have some heart to it. What do you prefer to actually DJ with? Um, it's like a whole like argument. Yeah. Like held off. Or... I held off for years on on kind of moving on. Really, I played up in. I mean, I played vinyl up until you know it maybe a year ago. Um, and I started. I mean, even on Friday night, you know, I play, um, um, played a bit of a longer set of the warehouse project. So I took I took a big stack of vinyl down. Vinyl down, but I do play off Serato, so it is off laptop. But I think the art of you know the 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 way in which you play off Serato is that it's very very much like linked to to the original form of DJing. So you know you you play off your laptop but you use the decks and you use the CDs as triggers, so you still you still have to mix, but it just saves you back from it, carrying records around. Does it depend on the actual club and the set that you're doing? Well, no, yeah, it can do. I mean, because because I live in Manchester, and it's the Warehouse Project. Yeah. I mean, if I'm playing for three, four hours, then it's kind of I can just you know I can have the luxury of just just walking up the road and bringing my records with me and things yeah. like that. When you're travelling, you're playing away, and you know if you've got, I mean, if all you have to take is your laptop and a few backup CDs in case of a in case of a malfunction, then you um, then it just makes it a lot easier. You see, mm. but you still have. I think the, the fundamentally it's like the art form of DJing with Serato is that you still use the deck. Still you still use them. Yeah, you're not. Well, yeah. It's not it's syncopated. It's not you know. There's something time. really sexy about vinyl, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. totally, yeah, absolutely, definitely, apart from paying for it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Carrying it around. No, it's like, it's, no, it's one of the things I think, like kids now, I mean, I, I say kids, I mean, I'm, well, I'm 30, but I've, I mean, I was buying vinyl when I was 11, yeah. and I think that, um, I mean, it's amazing, I mean, you turn it into a collector, I mean, you know, any DJ that's DJ for, for a certain amount of years, then, you know, they always still have amazing vinyl collection, mm. and you can't, it's difficult, you don't lose that, you never lose that bug. Yeah. But it kind of, you know, things move on, and, and even like technology, isn't it? Well, technology, and, and, and you know, the amount of you get, I mean, so many, you know, it's the mailing list that you get sent a lot. I mean, a, a lot of stuff doesn't even come out on vinyl, which is yeah, a shame. And it's, it's really shame. so it's kind of, you know, stuff, it's got the stuff that you, Did you lose the artwork as well, isn't it? Something nice about Exactly. It, I mean, I used to, I mean, it's like used to do the. One thing I did find difficult was the period when it was seated, so it went from vinyl and then you started using a lot of CDs because you right. get tracks sent digitally. Okay. I found that difficult because I used to. No matter what you write on a CD, it's just a CD, you yeah. know. No matter when, you know, you've had a few 
drinks yeah. and you, 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 you play and it's dark and you're skimming for your CD case and you just can't not, work out what's what. You've everything. not got the, the red you know the red yeah. cover with the dogged yep. ear and the yellow bit yeah. with its ripped and you know you just know what you what tracks look yep. like but you know it's you can't a different feel I guess it's a different feel and I think that whole you know yep. I think that the way in which and it just makes it easier with Serato is that you know things can be in crates and you can you can work stuff out a little bit before oh. um, but yeah I do miss I mean even though I do still play vinyl I do yeah. miss the ease of being at a fine so you feel like done. quite you know good happy when you're getting the vinyl out you know oh definitely with vinyl. yeah exactly it's just um well it is what it is i mean it's yeah. funny and i like and i like the you know the, the djs are like sort of say for example like Derek Carr. you know the way in which he mixes it you know he's there yeah. because by you know it'll go out of time slightly right, okay. but it's kind of on purpose and it's because sure. it's kept quite loose and it's got like it gives yeah. it a groove to it and i think that's what you get with yeah. vinyl yeah. yeah it's like a fry yeah exactly yeah. totally exactly right. exactly what it's about like on Friday, first time I played in a while with vinyl, and you know, you get the few skips and jumps, that but that's, that's, it, that's yeah. exactly, don't mind it, you know, it's not any, you know, if it jumps, it jumps, it's just one of the things. Yeah. Yep. What was the first record that you actually bought? Uh, first record I bought? Um, Probably something back. really obvious, like like bad or something like that. But I think it was um, um, no, the first. I think the first. I think the one that had most influence was my uncle when I was about eleven, just before I was eleven when I started, you know, got into yeah. the got into to the into rave and stuff when I was, yeah. you know, through the stuff um, through um, raves in Leeds actually. 11. Yeah, that's when I first. Young. That was a yeah, going on my mates, <laughs> going on my mates' brothers. Deck sneaking on the decks when sneaking he when he her. when he went out, but I um um, but the first record yeah going back to that the, the, the first record was a uh, it was a jazz record a Dave Brubeck quartet take five and it's a seven inch and my uncle gave me it and he said look you're probably not going to like it now which right. you were which I didn't hated it thought it was rubbish and and he said but you will you know for, you know years down the line it's like you know it's my favourite record and it's like it's not necessarily a record I've ever played but it's something that meant you know it, it was like a message saying you know you're gonna you learn how to like all music basically yeah yeah. So, how did you first get into DJing? I got into DJing, well, mentioned before, um, the sneaking on my mate's brother's decks when we, were, when we were still at school. And then from then, really, the break, you know, then it was like collecting, it was always like school discos, blah, blah, blah. And then um, it was when, it been about 18, I think, there was a little thing in Mixmag, there used to be a thing called Transmitter, which used to, a little news column that's in Mixmag, and there's a, a guy advertising, asking for, they're looking for a resident at the Void in Stoke. Okay. Um, and it was for a Sunday party, they were going to do it in a monthly Sunday party, sent in a mixed tape, cassette tape and yeah. you know he gave me a call and said you know do you want to, do you want to come and do it um, cool. and then from there I kind of you know I met Sam from the work from San, then Sankey's oh, and right. Sam Candel yeah and he came down with another DJ and we kind of there I started at Sankey's and it's kind of progressed from there.